so this is tutorial 9 on thermodynamic cycles so we will see uh, two power producing cycles Rankine cycle and Brayton cycle and one power absorbing cycle that is the vapor compression refrigeration cycle the first today problem is on basic Rankine cycle steam power plant cycle the question is the, a basic Rankine cycle operates between pressures of 10 mega Pascals and 10 kilo Pascals so you know that uh, there is a pressure ratio for these cycles the highest pressure is 10 mega Pascals lowest pressure is 10 kilo Pascals so in the boiler a fuel oil is burnt with air that results in continuous production of hot gases steam with a degree of superheat of 288.9 degrees centigrade is produced in the boiler by using the heat from the hot gases and it enters the turbine the steam enters the turbine to undergo an adiabatic expansion process turbine power output is 40 megawatts and the quality of steam at the turbine exit is 0.9 so these are the data given so it is given basic Rankine cycle so we have to understand what are the components in that and uh, try to fit these what are uh, given data into that and try to solve the problem so what is asked is determine the isentropic efficiency of the turbine heat transfer to steam in the boiler thermal efficiency of the plant neglecting the pump work if the heating value or calorific value of the oil is 30 mega joules per kg and 85 percent of energy released during combustion of oil gets into the steam in the boiler this is like a heat transfer efficiency okay water heat is generated during the burning of oil and air producing hot gases these hot gases exchange heat with uh, water to produce steam so that uh, efficiency we can say is 85 percent so if that is the case calorific value is given and the efficiency of uh, heat transfer is given determine the amount of oil flow rate that is to heat the water to steam in the boiler so this is the uh, problem now if you see let us first understand what is basic Rankine cycle which we already seen this has basically four components pump boiler so in this boiler only what happens is basically the water flows through a series of pipes and uh, here this boiler has an inlet and an exhaust basically here hot gases comes in hot gases to, due to the combustion of oil and air comes in and it goes out exits okay hot gas in and hot gas out now the boiler the steam is produced and the steam expands in its steam turbine produces the work for the pump we have to give some heat uh, sorry work for the pump we have to give some work input that is WP here this heat exchange happens so basically we can say here some amount of heat is given to the water and here this steam turbine and uh, the exit of the steam is now connected to a condenser and here heat is lost now this cycle continues so you can you know this basically here the additional thing what you have to consider is the 
the hot gases which are coming in and going out transfers the heat so what is the heat exchange happening here that you have to calculate to in order to calculate the amount of oil required okay now let us say this is state 1 the entry to the pump is state 1 and uh, entry to the boiler is state 2 so this operates higher pressure so pump actually increases the pressure so here pressure is p1 and here the pressure is p2 it is equal to the boiler pressure and uh, this p1 is equal to condenser pressure so here the pressure ratio of this is p2 by p1 okay now this is <coughs> exit of the boiler or inlet to the steam turbine that is 3 and uh, inlet to the condenser or exit of the steam turbine is uh, state 4 so this is the basic rankine cycle when i say basic see actually in uh, real steam power plant there are other components like reheating uh, regeneration etc now here only basic components are there and uh, pressure ratio is p2 by p1 is the pressure ratio so this is given as 10 mega pascals divided by 10 kilo pascals okay so condenser operates at a constant pressure constant pressure of 10 kilo pascals okay then boiler operates at a constant pressure of 10 mega pascals so this is the basic rankine cycle so now the data given we have taken p1 p4 equal to so we can say p1 equal to p4 equal to 10 kilo pascals then uh, p2 equal to p3 equal to 10 mega pascals now what is given is degree of superheat <coughs> is given what is degree of superheat degree of superheat is t saturation saturation temperature at the given pressure so in this case is boiler pressure so i'll say p boiler plus so this degree of superheat we will add so say degree of superheat tds so tds is degree of superheat so saturation pressure temperature saturation temperature at the boiler pressure plus degree of superheat that will be the t3 that is the temperature of the steam at the entry of the steam turbine okay so that is the given data the one more data is given what is that that is the quality quality of the steam at the turbine exit that is x4 is given as 0.9 so the given data is uh, the, uh, given here and power output this wt w dash t is 40 megawatts so all the data we have written here first one is the pressure ratio 10 mega pascals to 10 kilo pascals that is boiler operates at 10 mega pascals and uh, condenser operates at 10 kilo pascals then degree of superheat which will be used to determine the inlet temperature for the steam turbine t3 which is equal to saturation pressure at the boiler saturation sorry saturation temperature at the boiler pressure what is the saturation temperature at 10 mega pascals that plus the degree of superheat which is given as 289.9 and uh, the exit state of the steam in the uh, steam turbine from the steam turbine is 0.9 quality and the pressure you know obviously is 10 kilo pascals so with this we have to fix the states then apply the first law so let us apply uh, first uh, fix the states now before doing that one more thing we should understand that is the how this operates and how to plot the ts diagram for this so saturation lines we have drawn so 
to say this is 10 kilo pascal pressure then uh, this is say 10 mega pascal pressure isobar in a ts diagram now there are two conditions which is not given okay so for example state 1 state 1 pressure i know is 10 kilo pascals where that is the pump inlet go back you can see that pump inlet pressure is condenser pressure so it is 10 kilo pascals 10 kilo that is known but second property is not known so basically pump operates with liquid only so that means your state 1 should be at least a saturated liquid if not subcooled liquid okay see condenser operates the condenser exit state condenser heat is lost okay if you go back condenser heat is lost to the ambient okay so there is a steam with a quality of 0.9 exiting the turbine that enters the condenser. So, 90 percent of the steam going into the condenser will be in vapor phase mass of that 90 percent of mass. Now, in the condenser heat is lost, lost and finally, at the exit of the condenser the state 1 I should get only liquid. So, state 1 should be liquid only that means x1 should be 0 I will say at least why at least because I can get subcooled liquid also see this is the saturated liquid state at 10 kilo pascals correct I can go to this state also subcooled states also same pressure I can go to lower temperatures also by losing more heat in the condenser ok I can lose more heat here so when this increases I can get to lower and low lower uh, so it is not given but the data is not given but for the cycle to operate properly at least the state 1 should be a saturated liquid state at 10 kilo pascals so I can say state 1 can be fixed as P1 equal to 10 kilo pascals and X1 equal to 0 that is it. So, that is the first uh, thing you do. Now, state 2. So, I fix state 1 now. State 2, how the pump increases. the pressure of the liquid this is saturated liquid to from 10 kilo pascals to 10 mega pascals ok now there is no information about the pump operating conditions here ok so, let us see if the pump operates reversibly. Okay. And the heat loss from the pump is negligible. So, there are two things we are trying to see here. There is no heat loss from the pump. Whatever the work supplied is used to increase the pressure of the liquid, saturated liquid which is coming in into the pump. And uh, final pressure is the pressure of the boiler 10 mega pascals. Okay. Now, if the pump operates in a reversible manner and adiabatic heat loss is negligible, then 
the operation is isentropic so we can say see t ds equal to dh minus vdp so now that is isentropic means ds equal to zero so that means i can say dh equal to vdp and uh, when you integrate this 1 to 2 dh equal to 1 to 2 vdp so h2 minus h1 will be equal to vdp integrated from 1 to 2 now for integrating this i know i need to know the relationship between p and v but but for liquids v does not change much so let us go to the tables and see this so here go to the table saturation table based upon pressure so 10 kilo pascals 10 kilo pascals is how much bar so 10 1000 pascals that is 0.1 bar okay so 0.1 bar if you see what is the vf saturated liquid at okay saturated liquid means x1 equal to 0 correct so now what is vf 0.00 One zero one zero meter cube per kg. Correct. Now, ten mega pascals. So let's take ten mega pascals equal to ten into ten power six pascals. This is equal to hundred bar. So, go to hundred bar. So, from point one bar to hundred bar. Point one to one. Is one order of magnitude increase. One to ten is second. So th two orders of magnitude increase. If you do go, you go hundred bar. Now you see that the volume has V F equal to again saturated liquid. If you see V F equal to what? Basically zero point zero zero one four five three meter cube per kg. So But you can see in the diagram. Okay, if we go back to the PPT, you can see that if I go here, isentropically, isentropic process is entropy remains constant. So I can go isentropically and reach somewhere here. So this is this state two for me. A subcool liquid for the ten mega pascal pressure. If the temperature is known, I can do this. So please understand. I have to get to sub this state. So I'll say two yes. Because isentropically, I am going from one to two. Now, the volume here, the specific volume in this case itself is. So let us say this is the saturated liquid at ten mega pascals. Correct. The specific volume there itself is. Go back to this. Is only point zero zero one four five three. When compared to at point uh, one bar saturation. Uh, saturated liquid state the volume is 0.001010 so if you go back here the specific volume will be much lesser than this so i can say that the volume has not changed much correct so we can take v as v1 which is equal to 0.001010 meter cube per kg and then i can say h2 minus H1 will be equal to V1 because it's constant, so I take it out into integral 1 to 2 dP, which is equal to V1 into P2 minus P1. Okay, so this is the way I fix the state two. So what is the main thing? We can see that in this point itself, the volume has not changed much, but The subcool state where the pump is going to leave the high-pressure liquid. This state 
will have much smaller specific volume compared to this state. So, this is comparable to this volume only. So, we can say that the volume will not change, it is a uh, liquid. So, volume will not change much, pressure rises and uh, so I can fix the volume as V1 itself and not much big error will be induced due to this assumption. So, now this is the H2 minus H1, I will say H2S yes. because the isentropic state 2 is denoted by 2S. Okay, now this will be equal to zero point zero zero one zero one zero into ten into ten power three minus ten, which is equal to ten point one one kilo joule per kg. This difference is only this ten point one one kilo joule per kg. So what what I put this is ten megapascals. So, I convert it into 10 megapascals is 10 into 10 power 6. So, I convert it into kilopascals. So, 10 into 10 power 3 minus P1 is 10 kilopascals. So, I have kept in kilopascals. Both are in kilopascals. Okay. So, kilo joules per kg will come then. So, you can see the difference between H2 and H1 is only 10.11 kilo joule per kg. So, now I can fix the state 2 state of H2S yes, I can find. Okay. So, H2S yes, will be equal to H1 plus 10.11. Okay, what is H1? H1 go back to the tables. Here, for point 0.1, point 0.1, what is HF? Correct? HF is 191.8 kilo joule per kg. So, this is 191.8 plus 10.11, which is equal to 200. 1.91 kilo joule per kg. So, this is the value of H2S. So, state 2 is now fixed as pressure equal to 10 megapascals and H2S equal to 201.91. So, state 1 is fixed by assuming that the condenser exit state is, a, is at least a saturated liquid. If not, see, if I want to fix it as a subcool liquid, then I should know the temperature. Since the information is not given, at least it should be liquid. So, we can take it as a saturated liquid. So, that is fixed in that way. State 2, I have assumed the pump to operate in a reversible manner and heat loss is also negligible. Thus, it is isentropic. So, for isentropic pump, D is equal to 0. So, from the TDS relationship, dH equal to integral uh, dH equal to Vdp or delta H equal to integral Vdp. As, uh, noting that for liquids, V will not change much. Okay. We can say V as fix V as V1 itself and uh, do the integration as V1 into integral 1 to 2 dP. So, that will give you the H2 minus H1 as 10.11 kilo joule per kg and uh, H2S is fixed. So, state 2 is now fixed. Okay, So, now state 3 is actually given. Go back here. State 3 is uh, the pressure is 10 megapascals and degree of superheat is given. So, I know that how to fix the T3. T3 is what the saturation temperature at 10 megapascals plus the degree of superheat. So, here you go. See what is the saturation temperature for see for 10 megapascals that is 100 bar. 100 bar, second column is temperature. So, T sat at 100 bar equal to 311.1 degree centigrade. So, that I use. Okay. So, here T3, T3 equal to 311.1 plus 288.9 that is what is given here in the problem. degree of superheat is 288.9 okay now using that i get 600 degree centigrade 
T3 is fixed. So now I can put this. So this is the state 3. This is 600 degrees centigrade. So adding the T sat saturation temperature at 10 mega Pascals, which is 311.1 degrees centigrade, plus the degree of superheat, which is given in the problem as 288.9, I can get the temperature at the inlet to the turbine that is state 3. So that is the state 3 here. So state 3 values I can fix. Now state 4, the quality is given as 0.9. So somewhere here it will be. Okay. So here the quality is 0.9. So I can fix the state 4 here. So now that is the state 4. Okay. So now I complete this. So state 4 is also fixed. Okay. Easily. Because state 4 is what? State 4 is here x4 equal to 0.9. So state 4 is fixed by pressure being 10 kilopascals and the quality being 0.9. State 3 is fixed as pressure being 10 mega pascals and temperature being saturation temperature plus degree of superheat which is equal to 600 degrees centigrade. So two properties are required to fix each state. So how the states are fixed I will repeat. First one is the first state 10 kilopascals is the pressure. We have assumed that the condenser exit is at least a saturated liquid. So, x1 equal to 0 is taken. So, from that I can fix state 1. State 1 enthalpy h1 equal to hf at 10 kilopascals. So, that is this value we have taken from the table 191.8. So, equal to 191.8 kilojoule per kg. Similarly, state 2, we assume that the pump operation is isentropic. See, see the pump uh, uh, delta H is very small. So, pump op operation is uh, isentropic and uh, from that we can use the TTS relationship, find the dH value as VDP and integrate that. Now, uh, noting that for the liquids, it is basically the volume of specific volume remains constant. So, using V as V1, we can just integrate as V1 into delta P, which gives the delta H as 10.11. From that, state 2 is fixed. So, state 2 is fixed as pressure being 10 mega Pascals and the enthalpy is 201.91. State 3, which degree of superheat we have fixed, and state 4 is given at 10 kilopascals, the quality is 0.9. So, this is the representation of the cycle. You please understand here that in this, if you take a particular component, it is a control volume. There is a mass flow inside into the particular component. For example, pump, there is a liquid water flowing into the pump and a higher pressure liquid comes out of the pump. And for that, I have to give some work input W dot P. If you take this, basically the boiler, you can see that boiler, some heat input comes to the boiler as liquid at higher pressure goes it's a constant pressure operation then the same pressure superheated vapor comes out and uh, steam turbine again as a control volume it actually delivers work it is actually adiabatic so it is given here that undergoes an adiabatic expansion in the turbine so it is adiabatic so w dot t is the work delivered by the turbine and again the superheated uh, vapor at 10 mega pascal 600 degrees enters and a uh, steam at the quality of 0.9 at a pressure of 10 kilopascals exits. And finally, in this control volume, the condenser, the steam with a quality of 0.9 is cooled so that at least a saturated liquid at uh, the condenser pressure of 10 kilopascal is coming out. So, these are four control volumes. Taking the end, a group of all the control volumes, you get the system. Okay, so uh, power plant is a system basically. So now in this slide, we have fixed all the states very carefully. Of course, with two assumptions. One is the inlet state of the pump taken as saturated liquid because no other information is uh, available. But there is nothing wrong in taking this. 
in most of the cases it will be a saturated liquid or slightly subcooled that will not affect the results much similarly the isentropic operation is uh, assumed for the uh, pump that is also fine now we will go to the first law for each so now let us fix the enthalpies so h1 is known 191.8 kilo joule per kg h2s also we have calculated 201.91 201.91 kilo joule per kg then h3 is nothing but h at 10 mega pascals 600 degree centigrade now we have to go to the table for this here for 100 mega pascals that is 100 bar uh, 10 mega pascals 100 bar the saturation temperature is 311 Obviously, a degree of superheated is added, so that means the state is superheated uh, vapor. So go to the tables, uh, superheated tables. Okay, superheated steam tables here for hundred bar. So we have to go down here. You can see for hundred bar superheated table, the temperature given is six hundred degrees centigrade. From that, I take the value of enthalpy and uh, entropy. Both I can take six three six two five and 6.903 why i want entropy because it is asked in the question that isentropic efficiency of the turbine to be determined so that that's why i need the value of entropy okay so now h3 equal to 3625 kilo joule per kg from the same table i have taken s3 also as 6.903 kilo joule per kg kelvin so these are the values i have taken now h4 So now H4 is what H4 is H F plus X4 into H G minus H F at 10 kilo pascal. So from 10 kilo pascal table saturation table, you have to find the values of H F and H G, and X4 is known 0.9. So substituting that, we can get this. So let us go to the tables again here. What is the value of uh, Hg Hf, and uh, I want to val uh, get the value of the Sf and uh, Sg also. So at this line, you can say this is Hf, this is Hg, one three six three two seven four three, and this is four two, and this is uh, the Sf and Sg values. Let us take this Hf. So at Okay, I have to take it at ten kilopascals. This is hundred kilopascals. For ten kilopascals, you can see that this is the thing. Uh, Hf is one ninety one point eight. Hg is two five eight five. Sf is point six four nine, and Sg is eight point one for the ten kilopascals. So we will take these values here. Hf is equal to one ninety one point eight kilojoule per kg. Hg equal to two five eight five kilo joule per kg. Similarly, Sf. Sf equal to two five eight five kilo joule per kg Kelvin, and uh, Sg equal to eight point one five. Kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So you can just go back and see that 1.649.8.15.191.8.2585. So these are the values. Now I calculate H4 as so 1.91.8 plus 0.9 times 2585 minus 1.91.8, which is equal to 23. 2345.68 kilo joule per kg so now i have fixed all the uh, states basically now what is the turbine power so q dot minus w dot equal to m dot into h 3 H four minus H three, okay. Neglecting 
the kinetic energy and potential energy changes. Okay. Okay. Now this is zero adiabatic operation. So turbine power also is given to us forty megawatts. You can go back and see in the problem. Forty megawatt turbine power is given. So that you sub, uh, substitute here. Forty into ten power three kilowatts equal to m dot. I don't know into h four. I have calculated two three four five point six eight minus h three. H three is three six two five. Okay. So this implies m dot equal to what? Because this is negative. This is also negative. So negative will cancel. M dot equal to forty into ten power three divided by this difference. That will give you the mass flow rate of steam as thirty one point two six seven kilogram per second. This is the mass flow rate of steam. Steady state, steady flow. So this much of steam is uh, flowing through the turbine. Similarly, it will flow through condenser. The ma, uh, but the change, the phase will change. Correct. As it flows as a superheated uh, vapor through the turbine, it becomes. Uh, a yeah, saturated mixture of uh, liquid and vapor in the uh, exit of the turbine or in the inlet of the condenser it becomes saturated liquid and uh, in the pump entry and it becomes higher pressure uh, liquid subcooled liquid in the uh, exit of the or inlet to the boiler exit of the pump or inlet to the boiler so this is the steady flow rate mass flow rate so mass flow rate will remain constant through the control volumes so this is done Mass flow rate is calculated. Then we have to calculate isentropic efficiency. So now go back to this figure. Isentropic efficiency. So basically, this means that you can see this. Basically, H uh, H three H four basically are different in this case. So basically, I cannot draw this line because in the actual process, it is irreversible. So I have to draw only dashed line because I don't know exactly what happens. But on the other hand, if I draw a vertical line like this, this will be four yes. Isentropic state exit state of the turbine that is four yes. Actual exit state of the turbine is four. Okay. Now I have to determine the isentropic exit state, then calculate the work involved in this. From then I can calculate the isentropic efficiency. Do you understand? So for that, if the turbine operation is isentropic, then exit state of turbine, exit state uh, enthalpy entropy of the turbine will be equal to this. And I know the value six point. Nine zero three kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So now state four s is what p equal to p four equal to ten kilo pascals and s four s equal to what six point nine zero three kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Now I have taken the value of values of S F and S G and I find that S four s is Less than S G because S four is six point nine. This is eight point one five at ten kilo pascals. Correct. So that means the state is obviously from the figure itself you can understand. In this figure itself you can see that the quality has reduced much. State four quality is point nine. State four S yes, the quality is lesser than point nine, as the figure indicates. So I have to calculate yes. The quality is 4s. That is x4s, which is what? Which is 6.903 minus 0.649 divided by 8.15 minus 0.649. Okay, this is nothing but what? Yes, 4s minus Sf divided by Sg minus Sf. Okay, so that will give the quality as 0.83. Three seven. So you can see that the quality has still reduced in the isentropic process, but the work output will increase. So from this, I can find H four S as H F plus 
x 4s into hg minus hf so which is equal to h 4s will be equal to 2187 kilo joule per kg okay now what will be the isentropic efficiency of the turbine will be equal to specific work okay actual divided by specific work isentropic so which is equal to what h 3 minus h 4 actual specific work divided by h 3 minus h 4 yes so which is equal to <coughs> 3625 minus 2345.68 kilo joule per kg divided by 3625 minus 2187 so which is equal to 0. 8896 or 889 percentage so you can see this isentropic efficiency that is the actual operation you get only 89% of the ideal or isentropic operation the work output so this is done then the third one is the boiler heat so in boiler heat added How much equal to m dot into go back here boiler H three minus H two constant pressure operation correct first some heat is added to sensibly heat the subcooled liquid at ten mega pascals to saturated liquid then latent heat is supplied for the total mass flow rate latent heat is supplied and it becomes saturated vapor at ten mega pascals then the super heat is added. That is called degree of superheat. So it is added to make it superheat vapor. So now we can say this is nothing but heat added Q Q dot H equal to M dot into H four sorry H three uh, minus H two S. Yes. So which is equal to three one point two six seven into Three six two five H three minus H two S two one two zero one point nine one. So that will be equal to hundred and seven point not three megawatts. So now what is the thermal efficiency work of the turbine divided by Q dot H? Why? Because it is asked in the problem that calculate the thermal efficiency. Neglecting the pump work. What is the point in calculating the pump work? Not required because pump work is very small. So you can see this change. See, for example, H three minus H four. H three minus H four is basically three six two five minus two three four five. It is about two thousand three hundred plus. Correct, thousand two hundred something. But the pump work comes to be pump delta H. Is only ten point one one, so that means that can be neglected. So this W dot T that is forty megawatts. That is the power of the actual actual power of the turbine delivered by the turbine divided by this hundred and seven point not three. So the thermal efficiency comes out to be thirty seven point three seven percentage thermal efficiency. So we have solved. Here, first one is isentropic efficiency. Then heat transfer to the steam in the boiler. That is 107.3 megawatts. Then the thermal efficiency. So finally, I need to calculate the oil amount of oil required. Okay. So now, please understand that I have to supply this much of heat. The 107.3 megawatt heat I have to transfer. So, so for this. Let us say m dot o is the mass flow rate of the oil into is its uh, heat of combustion or calorific value into efficiency of heat transfer. So that will be equal to this, correct? So I know CV. CV is thirty mega joules per kg, and this is zero point eight five, correct? I know this too. Go to the problem. The calorific value 
of the CV, chronologically CV is 30 megajoules per kg and 80% of the energy released. So, what is energy released? Per kg of uh, oil, 30 megajoules will be, uh, be released. So, if m dot kg per second of oil is flowing, is used for heating, then m dot into 30 megawatts will be released. In that, 80% only is used for heating. So, that is what I have written here. M dot oil, which I have determined, Cv is 30 megajoules per kg. Efficiency of heat transfer is 0.85. That should be equal to 101.03. From this, I can evaluate the value of M dot O. So, M dot O will be 4.2 kg per second. So, you have to use 4.2 kilograms of oil per second in order to heat. Uh, provide heat to produce a yeah, steam from subcooled liquid state at 10 mega Pascals to superheated steam at 600 degrees centigrade. So, that is the answer. So, you can see this all the things are now determined the oil flow rate based upon the calorific value given as 30 mega Pascals and 80 percent heat transfer efficiency. So, this is about the problem. We can see that the basic rank and cycle only 4 control volumes are used lot of other additions you can see the temp the efficiency here is only 37 percentage so in order to improve the efficiency several other uh, additions are made to the rankine cycle but in this problem we are only concerned about the basic rankine cycle which has only four control volumes okay so this is about the first problem